Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, celebrating 55 years of ministry. I grew up with the knowledge of God and the presence of God, but I knew I needed to know Him better. I've always thought of God as a harsh father. His teachings just really brought me back to, you know, knowing who God is and recognizing it. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today, I'm nearing the end of my eighth week of teaching through this little teaching that I've, I just wrote this booklet a couple of months ago entitled 20 Revelations That Will Change Your Life. And it's arranged in chronological order of things that God has shown me all the way back to the beginning when I was eight years old that I realized I was a sinner and I was going to hell unless I needed a Savior and then talking about salvation by grace through faith and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I've just been going through these revelations. We're now on Revelation number 16 out of these 20, and so I'm, I'm not going to be able to finish this this week. I'll go into next week teaching this. And, and the last couple of days, I've been talking about the authority that God has given us as believers. We have this book on the authority of the believer as well as CDs, DVDs, study guide, and things like that. A lot of material. We'll be giving out the information about that at the end of the program. But today I want to turn over to Mark chapter 11, and I use this passage often, but to me this is a great illustration of how God gave us authority and power. And this is where Jesus, the last week of His earthly ministry here on the earth, uh, he was going into Jerusalem with his disciples, and it says in Mark chapter 11, verse 12, and on the morrow when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. Speaking of he is Jesus, was hungry and seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came if happily he might find anything thereon. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves for the time of figs uh, was not yet. Did you know in Israel, fig trees produce uh, figs before they produce leaves. So it wasn't time for figs yet, but it wasn't time for leaves yet either. This tree was professing something that it didn't have. It was a hypocrite. It was a pervert. God is the one who made this tree. He told it how to function, and it was functioning contrary to the way He created it to operate. So He was well within His uh, authority as Creator to curse this fig tree. And when he saw that it was professing it had tree, uh, figs by having leaves, but it didn't have them, it says in verse 14, Jesus answered and said unto it, the it it's talking about is the fig tree. And here's what he said. He said, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. This is amazing. And the next day, it's apparent that they walked back to where they were staying the same way. They were staying in the same place. It's possible that they might have gone some different way, but probably they walked by, and yet the fig tree didn't look any changed. It didn't look changed at all uh, after that day. He went into the temple, and this is the second time he cast the money changers out of the temple and overthrew their uh, tables, and then they went back by that same fig tree. And then the next day, as they were coming back into the... Uh, into Jerusalem, it says, And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Boy, there's a whole message in this. I'm just going to mention it. I don't have time to preach on it. But the Lord spoke to that fig tree, cursed it, told it to die, and no man would ever eat of you. And nothing happened immediately that was visible, but the next day the fig tree was dried up from the roots. What this means is the moment Jesus spoke, it was a done deal. But it happened in the roots first, and it wasn't visible. You can't see below the surface. You couldn't see what the roots looked like. It took 24 hours for what Jesus had spoken to manifest above the ground. And that is a perfect illustration of that many times we speak and command sickness to go and and, uh, you know, infections to die and things like this. And you may not see or feel anything immediately, but within a short period of time it happened. It was cursed at the roots, and it's just a matter of time until what has happened in the spiritual realm comes into the physical realm. What happened in the unseen realm below the surface is manifest above the surface. So there's a great message in that. 
But it says in the next verse, in verse 21, And Peter, calling to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which you cursed is withered away. And I often say this, but we don't hear the inflection of his voice. It wasn't like he just said, Master, the fig tree that you cursed is withered away. It was more like, Master, look at this fig tree. He was shocked because Jesus hadn't touched the fig tree. He didn't pour salt on it. He didn't chop it down. He didn't do anything except speak to it. Peter was overwhelmed with the power of words. And he was shocked. And it says, Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. We also can't hear his inflection of his voice, but I can guarantee you he didn't just go, Have faith in God. No, it was more like, Have faith in God. You, you know, there's a reason that these guys were called disciples. Man, they had been with him three and a half years by this time, and they still hadn't got it. They were still shocked to see the power that was in his words. And so Jesus said, Have faith in God. And then in verse 23, he says, For verily, the word verily means truthfully, truly. Anything Jesus said was the truth. But when he had to start what he was saying by saying, Now this is the truth, it's because what he was going to say was so astounding, it was so amazing that people might think, Surely he couldn't mean what he said. So he just assures them, I'm telling you the truth. This is a completely TRUTHFUL STATEMENT THAT WHOSOEVER WILL SAY UNTO THIS MOUNTAIN, BE THOU REMOVED, AND BE THOU CAST INTO THE SEA, AND SHALL NOT DOUBT IN HIS HEART, BUT SHALL BELIEVE THAT THOSE THINGS WHICH HE SAYETH SHALL COME TO PASS, HE SHALL HAVE WHATSOEVER HE SAITH. NOW, THERE'S A LOT IN THIS. AND THE VERY NEXT TEACHING THAT I'M GOING TO GET INTO TALKING ABOUT THESE 20 REVELATIONS IS HOW THAT FAITH IS VOICE ACTIVATED. AND I'LL COME BACK TO THESE VERY VERSES, AND I'LL MAKE A DIFFERENT POINT FROM THESE VERY VERSES ABOUT HOW YOU RELEASE YOUR FAITH BY SPEAKING TO THINGS. BUT WHAT I REALLY WANT TO POINT OUT TODAY FROM THIS VERSE, THE LORD SAID, WHOSOEVER WILL SAY TO THIS MOUNTAIN, BE THOU REMOVED, BE THOU CAST INTO THE SEA, AND SHALL NOT DOUBT IN HIS HEART, BUT SHALL BELIEVE THAT THOSE THINGS WHICH HE SAYETH SHALL COME TO PASS, HE SHALL HAVE WHATSOEVER HE SAYS. NOTICE THAT HE DIDN'T SAY, WHOEVER WILL PRAY TO GOD AND ASK GOD TO DO THIS, GOD WILL DO IT FOR YOU. THAT'S NOT WHAT HE SAID. HE SAID, WHOEVER WILL SPEAK TO THE MOUNTAIN, NOT TALK TO GOD ABOUT THIS MOUNTAIN, BUT TALK TO YOUR MOUNTAIN ABOUT GOD. A MOUNTAIN HERE IS JUST SYMBOLIC OF WHATEVER IT IS THAT YOU'RE WANTING TO BE REMOVED OUT OF YOUR WAY. AND HE SAID, WHOEVER WILL SPEAK TO THESE PROBLEMS, TALK TO THE PROBLEMS. DON'T TALK TO GOD ABOUT YOUR PROBLEM, BUT TALK TO YOUR PROBLEM ABOUT GOD. YOU KNOW, HIDDEN IN THIS, IF YOU'LL STOP AND THINK ABOUT IT, YOU CAN SEE THIS, BUT THIS MEANS THAT YOU HAVE TO UNDERSTAND YOU HAVE AUTHORITY. INSTEAD OF YOU GOING TO GOD AND SAYING, OH, GOD, I'VE GOT THIS PROBLEM. I'VE GOT THIS MOUNTAIN OF A PROBLEM. WOULD YOU PLEASE DO SOMETHING? NO, GOD TOLD YOU TO TAKE THE AUTHORITY THAT YOU HAVE, AND YOU SPEAK TO THE MOUNTAIN. DON'T PRAY TO HIM. DON'T ASK HIM TO DO IT. HE'S ALREADY GIVEN YOU THE POWER AND AUTHORITY. YOU DO IT. MAN, THIS IS POWERFUL. AGAIN, I ENCOURAGE YOU TO GET THESE MATERIALS BECAUSE I COULD MINISTER ON THIS FOR A COUPLE OF WEEKS. I'M JUST SAYING SOME THINGS QUICKLY, AND YOU NEED TO REALLY GET HOLD OF THIS BECAUSE THIS IS POWERFUL. YOU KNOW, LET ME USE ANOTHER ILLUSTRATION. JUST FOR TIME'S SAKE, I'M GOING TO JUST SUMMARIZE THIS. BUT MOSES, WHEN THE LORD CALLED HIM AT THE BURNING BUSH, HE TOLD HIM, WHAT'S IN YOUR HAND? AND MOSES SAID, A ROD. IT WAS JUST A STICK. IT WAS MOSES' STICK. AND HE SAYS, CAST IT DOWN ON THE GROUND. AND WHEN HE THREW IT ON THE GROUND, THIS STICK BECAME A SERPENT, AND MOSES FLED FROM BEFORE IT. THE LORD CALLED HIM BACK, AND HE SAYS, NOW TAKE IT UP BY THE TAIL. AND I HADN'T GOT TIME TO GO INTO THE WHOLE THING, BUT 40 YEARS BEFORE, MOSES KNEW THAT GOD HAD CALLED HIM TO BRING DELIVERANCE TO THE JEWS. THAT'S WHAT IT SAYS IN ACTS CHAPTER 7. AND HE KNEW WHAT GOD'S WILL FOR HIM WAS, BUT HE ASSUMED THAT GOD WAS GOING TO USE HIS NATURAL POSITION, HIS NATURAL MIGHT AND POWER TO GET IT DONE. AND HE WENT AND KILLED AN EGYPTIAN THINKING THAT HIS BROTHER AND THE JEWS WOULD HAVE UNDERSTOOD HOW THAT GOD WOULD DELIVER HIM BY, their, by HIS HAND, BUT THEY UNDERSTOOD NOT. That's WHAT IT SAYS IN ACTS CHAPTER 7. AND SO MOSES HAD TO FLEE FROM EGYPT AND SPENT 40 YEARS IN THE WILDERNESS. NOW HERE HE IS AFTER THOSE 40 YEARS, 
AND HE HAD BEEN SAYING DURING THIS TIME, GOD, GIVE ME ANOTHER CHANCE. THAT'S WHAT IT SAYS IN HEBREWS CHAPTER 11. HE ENDURED AS SEEING HIM WHO IS INVISIBLE. THE WORD ENDURE DOESN'T MEAN THAT HE WAS RUNNING FROM GOD, TRYING TO FORGET GOD AS THAT MOVIE, THE TEN COMMANDMENTS, PORTRAYS IT. NO, HE WAS SEEKING GOD, AND HE WAS HOPING FOR ANOTHER CHANCE. AND he, I BELIEVE HE WAS SAYING, GOD, I'LL DO ANYTHING. I'LL DO IT YOUR WAY THIS TIME. I WON'T DO IT MY WAY. I WON'T LEAN UNTO MY OWN UNDERSTANDING. AND SO HERE HE WAS, AFTER 40 YEARS IN BUSH UNIVERSITY, GOD'S GIVING HIM HIS FINAL EXAM. AND HE'S SAYING, WILL YOU DO ANYTHING? ANYTHING. GOD SAYS, THROW YOUR ROD DOWN. IT BECOMES A SNAKE. AND THEN HE SAYS, NOW PICK IT UP BY THE TAIL. AND DID YOU KNOW, IF YOU PICK UP A SNAKE BY THE TAIL, YOU DON'T HAVE ANY CONTROL OVER THAT SNAKE. THAT SNAKE CAN TURN AND BITE YOU. FROM MOSES' PERSPECTIVE, HE HADN'T READ EXODUS CHAPTER 4, VERSE 4 YET. HE HADN'T WRITTEN IT. HE DIDN'T KNOW THAT THE SECOND HALF OF THE VERSE SAYS THAT THE SNAKE WOULD TURN BACK INTO A ROD. FROM HIS PERSPECTIVE, PICKING UP A POISONOUS SNAKE BY THE TAIL COULD HAVE BEEN A DEATH SENTENCE. AND I BELIEVE THAT THIS WAS SYMBOLIC OF MOSES SAYING, GOD, I'LL DO ANYTHING, EVEN IF IT CAUSES MY OWN DEATH. I'M NOT GOING TO DO, LEAN UNTO MY OWN UNDERSTANDING ANYMORE. AND WHEN HE PICKED IT UP, IT BECAME A ROD AGAIN. AND DID YOU KNOW TO MOST PEOPLE, I'M SURE IT LOOKED EXACTLY LIKE THE SAME ROD THAT IT WAS BEFORE, BUT THE DIFFERENCE WAS, IF YOU GO DOWN TO EXODUS CHAPTER 4, VERSE 20, IT SAYS THAT MOSES TOOK HIS WIFE AND HIS CHILDREN AND PUT THEM UPON AN ASS, AND THEY WENT DOWN, AND HE TOOK THE ROD OF GOD IN HIS HAND. IN EXODUS CHAPTER 4, VERSE 2, IT WAS JUST A STICK. IT WAS JUST A ROD. IT WAS MOSES' STICK. IT DIDN'T HAVE ANY MORE POWER THAN HE COULD MANIFEST. IF HE HIT A ROCK WITH IT, IT WOULD HAVE BROKEN THE STICK. IT WOULD HAVE BROKEN, uh, OR IT MIGHT HAVE JARRED HIM, BUT IT WOULDN'T HAVE DONE ANYTHING SPECIAL. BUT NOW THAT HE HAD LAID IT DOWN BEFORE GOD AND TAKEN IT BACK, IT WAS NOT HIS STICK. IT WASN'T HIS ROD ANYMORE. IT WAS THE ROD OF GOD. MAN, THAT'S AWESOME. AND SEE, THIS IS WHAT HAPPENED. GOD, WHEN YOU GIVE YOUR LIFE TO HIM, GOD GIVES IT BACK TO YOU. AND TO OTHER PEOPLE, IT MAY LOOK LIKE YOU'RE THE SAME PERSON. BUT THE TRUTH IS, BETWEEN YOU AND GOD, THERE'S A COVENANT. AND GOD HAS NOW GIVEN YOU HIS AUTHORITY AND POWER. AND MOSES TOOK THIS STICK. IT WAS NOW, IT WAS NOT MOSES' STICK. IT WAS GOD'S STICK, GOD'S ROD. AND HE HELD IT OUT OVER THE RIVER NILE, AND IT TURNED INTO BLOOD. HE HELD THE ROD OUT OVER THE RIVER AND FROGS CAME OUT OF THE RIVER. HE HELD IT OUT OVER THE LAND AND LICE CAME UP. HE HELD IT UP TO THE SKY AND HAIL FELL OUT OF A CLEAR SKY. HE HELD IT UP TO THE SUN AND THE SUN WAS DARKENED FOR THREE DAYS AND YET THERE WAS SUNLIGHT, NOT CANDLELIGHT, SUNLIGHT IN THE HOUSES OF ALL OF THE ISRAELITES. HE HELD IT OUT AND DID ALL OF THESE MIRACLES IN THE FIRSTBORN DIED, AND FINALLY THE ISRAELITES LEFT uh, EGYPT. AND THEN IN THE 14TH CHAPTER OF THE BOOK OF EXODUS, YOU FIND GOD SETTING A TRAP FOR PHARAOH, TOLD MOSES TO ENCAMP IN A PLACE THAT WAS UP AGAINST THE RED SEA, AND THEN THERE WAS A MOUNTAIN ON EACH SIDE. SO IT WAS LIKE A VALLEY. IT WAS LIKE A BOX CANYON. THERE WAS NO ESCAPE. AND THE LORD SAID, I'LL HARDEN PHARAOH'S HEART SO THAT HE WILL COME AFTER YOU. GOD WAS SETTING A TRAP FOR PHARAOH, AND HE SAID, THE EGYPTIANS WHO YOU'VE SEEN, YOU'LL SEE THEM AGAIN NO MORE. AND SO SURE ENOUGH, HERE COME THE EGYPTIANS. ALL OF THE ISRAELITES PANIC. THEY SAY, WOULD TO GOD, WE'D DIED. AND THEY GET INTO TOTAL UNBELIEF. AND MOSES STANDS UP AND SAYS, STAND STILL AND SEE THE SALVATION OF THE LORD, BECAUSE THE EGYPTIANS THAT YOU'VE SEEN TODAY, YOU WILL SEE THEM AGAIN NO MORE FOREVER. AND MOST PEOPLE THINK THAT'S GREAT. BUT THE NEXT VERSE, THE LORD SAID, WHY ARE YOU CRYING UP TO ME? GET UP OFF YOUR FACE AND TAKE THE ROD AND HOLD IT OUT OVER THE RED SEA. YOU KNOW WHAT THIS ILLUSTRATES? MOSES WAS IN A BAD SITUATION. HERE COMES THE EGYPTIAN ARMY. Uh, JOSEPHUS, A FIRST CENTURY uh, JEWISH HISTORIAN, SAID THERE COULD HAVE BEEN UP TO 50,000 PEOPLE, 20,000 HORSEMEN, CHARIOTS, AND uh, 30,000 SOLDIERS. AND MOSES WAS CRYING AND SAYING, OH, GOD, DO SOMETHING. AND GOD SAYS, GET UP OFF YOUR FACE. DID YOU KNOW THERE'S A TIME TO PRAY, BUT THEN THERE'S A TIME TO TAKE THE AUTHORITY THAT GOD HAS GIVEN YOU AND USE IT. AND GOD TOLD MOSES, GET UP OFF YOUR FACE AND USE THAT ROD AND HOLD THAT ROD OUT. MAN, THAT IS POWERFUL. AND YOU AND I, 
YOU MAY NOT HAVE HAD A BURNING BUSH EXPERIENCE. YOU MAY NOT HAVE GONE THROUGH ALL THE THINGS MOSES DID, BUT YOU'VE HAD THE SAME THING HAPPEN. WHEN YOU GOT BORN AGAIN, GOD GAVE YOU HIS POWER AND AUTHORITY. AND YOU MAY BE PRAYING AND SAYING, OH, GOD, THE DOCTOR SAYS I'M GOING TO DIE. PLEASE DO SOMETHING. AND GOD'S SAYING, GET UP OFF YOUR FACE AND USE THE AUTHORITY THAT I'VE GIVEN YOU. AND I'M... I'M NOT GOING TO HAVE TIME TO GET INTO THIS IN GREAT DETAIL, BUT ON TOMORROW'S PROGRAM, I'M GOING TO START TALKING ABOUT HOW DO YOU USE THIS AUTHORITY. IT'S ONE THING TO UNDERSTAND YOU'VE GOT IT, BUT HOW DO YOU USE IT? WHAT DO YOU DO? ONE OF THE WAYS THAT YOU RELEASE THIS POWER IS WITH YOUR WORDS. DEATH AND LIFE ARE IN THE POWER OF THE TONGUE, PROVERBS CHAPTER 18, VERSE 21. AND YOU'VE GOT TO START SPEAKING, AS IT SAYS RIGHT HERE, SPEAK TO THE MOUNTAIN and command the mountain to get out of your way. Most Christians are talking to the Lord about their problems instead of talking to their problems about God. You've got to start speaking to the problem. That implies that you don't have to go to God and beg Him to do it. He has equipped you. He has given you as a born-again believer the same power and authority that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. LET ME TURN OVER AND READ THAT TO YOU OUT OF EPHESIANS IN CHAPTER 1, 18. THE EYES OF YOUR UNDERSTANDING BEING ENLIGHTENED THAT YOU MAY KNOW WHAT IS THE HOPE OF HIS CALLING AND WHAT THE RICHES OF THE GLORY OF HIS INHERITANCE IN THE SAINTS AND WHAT IS THE EXCEEDING GREATNESS OF HIS POWER TO USWARD WHO BELIEVE ACCORDING TO THE WORKING OF HIS MIGHTY POWER WHICH HE WROUGHT IN CHRIST WHEN HE RAISED HIM FROM THE DEAD AND SET HIM AT HIS OWN RIGHT HAND IN THE HEAVENLY PLACES. YOU HAVE THE SAME POWER THAT RAISED JESUS FROM THE DEAD LIVING ON THE INSIDE OF YOU, AND HE'S PRAYING THAT YOUR EYES WOULD BE OPEN TO WHAT YOU ALREADY HAVE. THE AVERAGE CHRISTIAN, SEE, DOESN'T UNDERSTAND THE POWER AND THE AUTHORITY THAT THEY HAVE, AND SO THEY COME TO GOD AS A BEGGAR. YOU KNOW, I PRAY WITH A LOT OF PEOPLE, AND PEOPLE COME TO ME, AND THEY WANT ME TO PRAY FOR THEM AND PRAY PRIMARILY FOR HEALING, SOMETIMES PROSPERITY OR, YOU KNOW, DIFFERENT THINGS. BUT MOST OF THE TIME, THE PEOPLE WILL COME AND THEY WANT ME TO FEEL PITY FOR THEM AND THEY WILL AMPLIFY THEIR PROBLEM AND TELL ME HOW BAD IT IS AND THEY'LL BREAK DOWN CRYING. AND AGAIN, I HAVE COMPASSION FOR PEOPLE, BUT SEE, PEOPLE COME AS A BEGGAR. THE DOCTOR SAYS I'M GOING TO DIE. THE BANKER IS GOING TO REPOSSESS OUR HOUSE. THERE'S NOTHING I CAN DO. They, THEY GLORY IN TALKING ABOUT HOW HELPLESS THEY ARE. THE MOMENT YOU APPROACH GOD OR YOUR PROBLEMS THAT WAY, YOU'VE LOST. BECAUSE, SEE, YOU AREN'T TAKING YOUR AUTHORITY. YOU AREN'T OPERATING IN ANY FAITH AT ALL. YOU'RE OPERATING IN TOTAL UNBELIEF. YOU SEE THE EGYPTIANS COMING AND ALL YOU'RE DOING IS WANTING TO GO BACK INTO SLAVERY AND YOU'D RATHER DIE IN EGYPT THAN TO DIE OUT IN FREEDOM AND STUFF AND HAVE THESE PROBLEMS COME AFTER YOU. YOU NEED TO QUIT MAGNIFYING YOUR PROBLEMS AND YOU NEED TO GET YOUR EYES OPEN TO WHAT YOU HAVE. THE POWER THAT YOU HAVE ON THE INSIDE OF YOU IS THE RAISING FROM THE DEAD POWER THAT RAISED CHRIST FROM THE DEAD. THAT'S MORE THAN ENOUGH POWER FOR YOUR CANCER, FOR YOUR MULTIPLE SCLEROSIS, YOUR DIABETES, FOR YOUR HANGNAIL OR WHATEVER. YOU'VE GOT MORE THAN ENOUGH POWER AND IT'S NOT OUT THERE SOMEWHERE. IT'S ON THE INSIDE OF YOU, BUT IT'S AT YOUR COMMAND. YOU'RE THE ONE WITH THE AUTHORITY TO USE IT, AND YOU'VE GOT TO STAND UP, AND INSTEAD OF APPROACHING GOD AS, OH, GOD, THERE'S NOTHING I CAN DO. I'M GOING TO DIE. PLEASE HELP. THAT WON'T GET YOU HEALED. YOU'VE GOT TO START PRAISING GOD. THANK YOU, FATHER, THAT THROUGH CHRIST, I HAVE THE SAME POWER THAT RAISED JESUS CHRIST FROM THE DEAD. THANK YOU FOR GIVING ME THIS POWER. THANK YOU, ACCORDING TO MATTHEW CHAPTER 10, VERSE 8, THAT YOU GAVE ME A COMMAND TO HEAL THE SICK, CLEANSE THE LEPERS, RAISE THE DEAD. THANK YOU THAT I ALREADY HAVE THIS POWER. AND NOW, IN THE NAME OF JESUS, I'M GOING TO SPEAK TO MY PROBLEM. I'M GOING TO TALK TO CANCER, COMMAND IT TO BE GONE OR WHATEVER. YOU KNOW, I'VE USED THIS EXAMPLE A LOT, BUT AGAIN, IT'S JUST THE BEST EXAMPLE THAT I'VE EVER EXPERIENCED. BUT I HAD A WOMAN WHO HAD PAIN IN HER BODY FOR SEVEN YEARS. THE DOCTOR SAID ON A SCALE OF ONE TO TEN, IT WAS A CONSTANT ELEVEN. THIS WOMAN WAS IN AGONIZING PAIN FOR OVER SEVEN YEARS. THE DOCTOR SAID SHE WAS SUPPOSED TO HAVE DIED TWO YEARS BEFORE I MET HER. SHE WAS JUST HANGING ON BY A THREAD. AND THE ONLY WAY SHE COULD MAKE IT, SHE HAD MAGNETS TAPED ALL OVER HER BODY AND THEN SHE HAD MAGNETS SEWN INTO A BLANKET AND SHE WRAPPED HERSELF IN THIS BLANKET AND SOMEHOW THE MAGNETIC FIELDS DECREASED THE PAIN SO THAT SHE COULD SURVIVE. 
SHE CAME OVER, I PRAYED WITH HER, AND COMMANDED THE PAIN TO LEAVE, AND I MEAN, FOR THE FIRST TIME IN SEVEN YEARS, SHE STOOD UP, TOOK THIS BLANKET OFF, AND SHE HAD NO PAIN WHATSOEVER, AND SHE WAS PRAISING GOD. BUT THEN SHE SAYS, I'VE GOT A STINGING RIGHT HERE IN THE BACK. HOW COME I DON'T... HOW how COME THE STINGING IS STILL THERE? I SAID, YOU DIDN'T TELL ME ABOUT STINGING. I DIDN'T TALK TO STINGING. SO I PRAYED AND COMMANDED THE STINGING TO GO, AND THEN I TAUGHT HER MARK CHAPTER 11, VERSE 23 AND 24, JUST LIKE I'VE SHARED ON THIS PROGRAM. AND I SPENT ABOUT 20 MINUTES TEACHING HER. AS SHE GOT READY TO LEAVE, SHE PUT HER HAND ON THE DOORKNOB, AND I REMEMBER SHE JUST FROZE. AND THEN SHE LOOKED OVER HER SHOULDER, AND SHE SAYS, THE STINGING IS BACK. AND I SAID, WELL, I'VE BEEN TEACHING YOU WHAT TO DO, SO YOU SPEAK TO THIS STINGING, AND YOU TAKE YOUR AUTHORITY. AND THIS WOMAN PRAYED A PRAYER, AND I MEAN, IT WAS A RELATIVELY GOOD PRAYER CONSIDERING WHERE SHE CAME FROM. SHE SAID SOMETHING LIKE, FATHER, THANK YOU THAT BY YOUR STRIPES I WAS HEALED. IF I WAS HEALED, I AM HEALED. I'M CLAIMING MY HEALING. BY JESUS' STRIPES I AM HEALED. AND MOST PEOPLE WOULD THINK THAT'S A GOOD PRAYER, BUT YOU KNOW WHAT? IT DIDN'T DO WHAT MARK 11, 23 COMMANDED US TO DO. JESUS SAID YOU HAVE TO SPEAK TO YOUR PROBLEM. SO I ASKED THIS WOMAN, I SAID, DO YOU STILL HAVE ANY STINGING? AND SHE SAID, YES, WHY? AND I SAID, BECAUSE YOU DIDN'T TALK TO THE PROBLEM. YOU TALKED TO GOD ABOUT YOUR PROBLEM. AND THE THINGS YOU SAID WERE GOOD, BUT YOU DIDN'T TAKE YOUR AUTHORITY AND SPEAK TO THE PROBLEM. AND THIS WOMAN SAYS, YOU MEAN I'M SUPPOSED TO SAY, STINGING IN THE NAME OF JESUS, LEAVE ME? AND I SAID, ABSOLUTELY. SO SHE SAID, I'LL DO IT. SO I JOINED HANDS WITH HER AGAIN, AND SHE PRAYED, AND THIS TIME SHE GOES... SHE GOT MAD, AND SHE SAID, STINGING IN THE NAME OF JESUS. AND THAT'S AS FAR AS SHE GOT. AND SHE SAYS, IT'S GONE. AND I'VE SEEN HER MULTIPLE TIMES SINCE THEN, AND AS FAR AS I KNOW, THAT'S... STINGING HAS GONE. IT WAS GONE FOR A LONG PERIOD OF TIME. I PRESUME IT'S STILL GONE. AND IT'S BECAUSE, SEE, THIS IMPLIES FOR YOU TO SPEAK TO YOUR PROBLEM INSTEAD OF TO GOD ABOUT YOUR PROBLEM, YOU HAVE TO UNDERSTAND GOD GAVE YOU AUTHORITY AND POWER. AGAIN, THIS IS ONE OF THE MOST MISUNDERSTOOD THINGS, AND IT'S KEEPING PEOPLE FROM RECEIVING WHAT GOD HAS FOR THEM. SO I'VE GOT THIS LITTLE BOOK THAT WE'RE GIVING TO EVERYBODY AS A FREE GIFT, 20 REVELATIONS. TODAY WILL BE MY LAST DAY TO TALK ABOUT THE AUTHORITY OF THE BELIEVER. THEN I WROTE THIS LITTLE BOOK ENTITLED THE BELIEVER'S AUTHORITY. THIS IS JUST AN INTRODUCTION TO IT. THIS IS ONLY uh, 55 PAGES LONG, AND THEN A MORE DETAILED EXPLANATION IS THIS 200-PAGE PLUS BOOK, AND WE ALSO HAVE CD'S, DVD'S, A USB, AND ALL KINDS OF OTHER WAYS FOR YOU TO GET HOLD OF THIS. WE'VE ALSO GOT THESE EXACT TEACHINGS THAT I'VE BEEN DOING ON TELEVISION FOR THE LAST EIGHT WEEKS. YOU CAN GET THESE EXACT PROGRAMS. YOU CAN GO TO OUR WEBSITE AND GET IT. YOU CAN ALSO GET IT IN A USB, YOU CAN ALSO GET IT IN CD'S AND DVD'S. OUR ANNOUNCER WILL GIVE YOU ALL OF THESE uh, OPTIONS FOR YOU TO GET MATERIALS, AND I ENCOURAGE YOU TO PLEASE TAKE ADVANTAGE OF IT. IT'LL BE A BLESSING. SO CALL OR WRITE TODAY. YOU KNOW, FOR A COUPLE OF MONTHS NOW, I'VE BEEN TELLING YOU ABOUT OUR EXPANSION AT Caris BIBLE COLLEGE, AND I'VE BEEN ENCOURAGING PEOPLE TO JOIN WITH US AND BECOME A PART OF THIS. WE SIMPLY CANNOT CHARGE ENOUGH FOR OUR STUDENTS TO PAY FOR ALL OF THIS BUILDING. IT'S GOING TO BE HUNDREDS OF MILLIONS OF DOLLARS, AND IT WOULD PRICE OUR CARIS BIBLE COLLEGE WAY OUT OF RANGE. WE CHARGE ABOUT $5,000 A YEAR NOW, AND I TELL YOU, WE'D HAVE TO CHARGE $500,000 A YEAR. IT JUST CAN'T BE DONE. WE NEED PEOPLE TO HELP US. AND YOU KNOW, WE HAVE OVER 5 BILLION PEOPLE THAT THIS PROGRAM REACHES ON A DAILY BASIS. NOT ALL OF THOSE WATCH, BUT IF YOU'VE CONSIDERED JUST 1%, THAT WOULD BE 50 MILLION PEOPLE. AND IF ONLY ONE-TENTH OF THOSE PEOPLE WERE ACTUALLY BEING BLESSED, THAT WOULD STILL BE 5 MILLION PEOPLE. IT WOULD TAKE NOTHING IF THOSE OF YOU WHO HAVE BEEN BLESSED BY THIS PROGRAM WOULD JUST BE A PART OF THIS. I'M NOT ASKING THIS FOR MYSELF. I'M ASKING IT SO THAT WE CAN TRAIN PEOPLE. WE'VE GOT THOUSANDS OF PEOPLE THAT WANT TO COME THAT JUST SIMPLY DO NOT HAVE THE FACILITIES. WE CAN'T ACCOMMODATE THEM. SO WE NEED TO DO THIS QUICKLY. AND THE MORE MONEY WE HAVE, THE QUICKER WE CAN GET IT DONE. IT'S SCRIPTURAL. THE SCRIPTURE SAYS THAT IF YOU'VE BEEN MINISTERED TO SPIRITUALLY, YOU'RE SUPPOSED TO GIVE BACK FINANCIALLY. SO I'M JUST ENCOURAGING YOU TO PRAY ABOUT BECOMING A PARTNER WITH US AND HELPING US BUILD OUT OUR Caris BIBLE COLLEGE CAMPUS IN WOODLAND PARK, COLORADO. YOU CAN GO TO AWMI.NET SLASH CAMPUS 
and we have an architect rendering of what the buildings will look like. There's also a place there that you can become what we call a foundation builder. This is a person who gives on a monthly basis to help do this. Our bills come in monthly and it's really the monthly partnership that enable us to project and get this done. So check it out, awmi.net slash campus. Gospel Truth Conference has just been incredible. It's electric. You can feel the spirit everywhere. You can feel the truth coming out, and you can feel your spirit saying, this is the truth. The first step to walking in victory is to get sick and tired of being sick and tired and to quit settling for less. And so many people are shooting at nothing and hitting it every single time. He's so nice and just sweet, just yeah. down to earth, you know, just like he said. Like he is on TV, he, that's how he is in person. Right. Thank you for preaching the gospel truth. This is a changing life. <laughs> Promise you, you're gonna be a brand new person inside and out. This is a conference. We ought to go back home different. I'll say, what happened to you? God changed me. I can't get this smile off my face. I'm pleased to announce that we now have my television program translated into Spanish. We have a lot of my materials available in Spanish, but let your friends know that we're now broadcasting our daily program in Spanish. Andrew is offering his booklets, 20 Revelations That Will Change Your Life and the Believer's Authority as his free gift to you today. This offer is available in the US, UK, Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free booklets. Andrew's complete series, 20 Revelations That Will Change Your Life, is available in a CD or TV DVD album and as a USB made from our daily television broadcast. Each of these valuable resources is available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. Also on today's broadcast, Andrew mentioned his teaching, The Believer's Authority. This teaching is available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. You can become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. Also, our products and additional resources are available in various languages through our website, awmi.net. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Andrew has many conferences and seminars around the globe each year. For the latest information on Andrew's complete speaking schedule, visit our website at awmi.net slash events.